How you doing everybody? I am Scott Jelnick with the Master Investor Academy and here we go over the five pillars of real estate investing. That's marketing, wholesale, rehab, rentals, and raising private money. And I just picked up a check for $75,671 and I wanted to tell you a little story about it and a couple lessons to be learned from it. So first of all, I want to tell you, as I always try and tell you, this $75,671 is not profit. My profit on this deal is right around $29,000. I tell you that because I see a lot of guys flashing these huge checks around on the internet and the reality is that's the full amount they're getting back but they still have the amount they put into the property. This particular property I contracted for $44,600, I paid closing cost into it and I was in it for a total of about $46,000. So I'm going to tell you a story about it so you can get a couple of lessons out of it how this check came about. So first of all, this check goes all the way back to June of 2016. I had an appointment on this house, I met the owners, we got along great, I made them the offer, they were good with the offer, but the guy was retiring in November and wasn't planning on moving till the end of November, so he didn't want to sign anything at the time. You follow me so far? So September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd, I had a live three-day event that I'm speaking at, so there's no way I can answer my phone during those days. So that just happened to coincide with the time that he was ready to call me to go ahead and finish up the paperwork and proceed to closing. Well, he couldn't get me. He called me two or three times. I'm speaking in front of a crowd, so obviously I'm not answering calls those days. So he went online and he found a competitor, He's thinking it was me. This is why I always tell you guys, the internet is the wild west and do not drive people to the internet. Solicit online for online business, but do not bring people offline to online. So anyway, so he found a competitor's company and unfortunately for me, it was one of the unscrupulous competitors out there. So he got this guy on the phone and he says, hey, I'm looking for Scott. You know, I want to be ready to do this contract. Well, this competitor now says, oh, Scott's no longer with us. I've taken over all of his accounts. Scott's still here. Anyway, so the competitor told him that he's now taken over all my accounts and he'd be happy to help them. He set an appointment to go out with them on Tuesday. Monday morning, I get back into the office and start returning all my phone calls. So I call this guy, hey, you called me Saturday. And he says, oh yeah, I already spoke with your partner. He said he took over all your accounts. And I was like, whoa, nobody took over my accounts. And I started telling him, you know, what was going on. You must have got the wrong guy. He told me he had an appointment with this guy on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and that he was going to cancel it and that I was supposed to come and finish up the paperwork. Well, Tuesday at 1030, he calls me and he says, would you mind coming over? I have a few questions I need to go over with you. So I agree and I head straight over there. When I get there, he's got a long, he's got a yellow legal pad and I can see he's got a whole bunch of questions. So he says, come on, sit down. And I can even read some of these questions from across the table sitting with him. Well, this other guy who had showed up at 10 o'clock, he didn't cancel that appointment, told him all kinds of crap, reasons he should deal with him, reasons he shouldn't deal with me. And you're gonna have to get used to this as an investor. There's a very low barrier to entry, so we get a lot of unscrupulous individuals in this business. So anyway, so then he proceeded to ask me about him. Well, what do you think about this guy? I'm not even gonna mention his name. And my answer is the same answer I tell all of you every day is do not, do not ever talk bad about your competitors. It only makes you look bad. So my answer is kind of passive aggressive, but what I always say is it's our company policy. We do not speak bad about our competitors. I always say it just like that. It's our company policy. We do not speak bad about our competitors. Well, in the end, this guy was testing me. He didn't like the other guy. He didn't like the way the guy was talking. We already had rapport, but he was seeing if I was gonna do the same thing, which I didn't. And so I just told him, I said, no, there's nothing. I'm not gonna say anything. We don't speak bad about our competitors. Well, in the end, he said, well, let me tell you, the guy offered me $2,000 more than your offer. And there I thought he was gonna try and get me to bump up another two grand, but he didn't even try that. He said, but my wife likes you and I like you and we're gonna go ahead and take your contract. Let's go ahead and get it signed now and move to closing. And so we did, and obviously I got the deal. The other guy, because he went talking all kinds of crap, ended up with nothing. So that's step one. Lesson number one I wanted to teach you on this particular check is do not talk bad about your competitors. It only makes you look bad. Lesson number two, which is equally as important, I put out this deal to wholesale, but because this guy was gonna live in it for a month, I didn't do a straight assignment because it was complicated. He's still living in the property. So I closed on it first with my own money. I did a wholesale barbecue there, which actually, if you've watched my videos, you've seen in a previous video. And the highest offer I got was for $62,000, which you know what I, what I had into it was 46 after closing costs and everything, which would have made me $16,000 and that was a great deal. But I already closed on it, I wasn't in a rush and I felt I could have done better. So what I did is I cleaned out the property, made it look just a touch nicer, and I listed it on the MLS as a wholesale for $99,000. 
The very first offer I got was $79,000. I accepted it and proceeded to closing. That's the check you're looking at right now. Oh, I got it back with you. That's the check you're looking at right now. I made an additional $17,000 just because I did not go ahead and accept the best wholesale deal I was able to get. Instead, I said, let me clean this up, put it on the market, and go after the full market value I was able to get, which was $79,000. Made an additional $17,000 just because I was a little bit patient. I already closed on it, so I decided to list it. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I wanted to share with you these two tips because they're both very, very important. Tip number one was do not ever speak bad about your competitors. It only makes you look bad. The homeowner doesn't know us from each other, so if you're speaking bad, for all they know, you're speaking about yourself. They don't know what you, who you are and who everybody is. Don't speak bad about anybody. It just makes you look bad. And number two is if you've already closed on the property, don't worry about getting wholesale for the first check you can get. You might as well put it out to the open market. Your best value is always going to come off of the MLS if, in fact, you had the money and you closed on it first. So that's all I have for you today. just wanted to share those two tips for you and go over this last check. I like to share these checks with you when we get them and the lessons that can be learned from each one. Have a great day. If you enjoy these videos, go ahead and subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you on the next video.